Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, in this video, I would like to read an article entitled Bahrain Knowledge Series Maritime Law Volume 1 Key Concept Maritime Law or Admiralty Law refers to the body of law which regulates ships, the commercial nature of shipping, navigations, and other nautical matters. The maritime law is particularly crucial to nations situated by a body of water where much of the commercial activity hangs on the ship's activity to and from the nation. Decree Law No. 23, 1982 on the issuance of the maritime law for the old law was the Kingdom of Bahrain first coherent legislation regulating maritime law. Four decades later, the kingdom enacted a new maritime law under Decree Law No. 10, 2022. Promulgating the maritime law, the maritime law or the law which drowns open the new elements in relations to vessel registration, vessel seizure, and maritime commercial activities, among other matters. Key concepts of the maritime law. Vessel Registrations The registration of vessels is, is regulated pursuant to Article 5 of the Maritime Law. In essence, vessels that are owned by Bahriani or GCC Nationals companies will qualify for registrations, although foreign-owned vessels might qualify for registrations if resident or has elected domicile in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Vessel with a gross tonnage of 150 tons or more are required to register, with the exceptions of vessel constructed, constructed more than 20 years ago at the time of submitting the registration applications. Carriage of goods by sea and bill of landing. Carriage of goods by sea is an important pillar of maritime laws in jurisdictions across the world as they form the basis of commercial relations between companies. The Maritime Law regulates the carriage of goods by sea and the bill of landing in Article 270 until 282. The bill of landing is a document which prov with proofs the carriage of goods contract and serves as the carriage receipt of shipment under which the shipper undertakes to deliver the goods against the return of the document. The draft maritime law addressed the bill of landing differently than in the final implemented maritime law. The 218B of the draft law stipulate that the contract of carriage of goods by sea shall only be established in writing through the bill of landing this was likely to lead to practical issues since the bill of landing is issued by the shipper open the carrier's request after the goods have been delivered or loaded into the ship it is therefore not possible to have the bill of landing serve as the only document which establishes the contract Mortgage, vessel, and precautionary seizure. Mortgage, ship are akin to other assets. They are capable of being mortgage and subject to legal seizure. When mortgaging a vessel, the ship owner agrees to provide the bank or lender with an interest in the vessel of security of security for a loan. Pursuant to Article 47 of the law. A mortgage on a vessel may only be carried out through a notarized contract failing which is shall be deemed null and void. To maximize the pot potential financial utility of the vessel, the law provides that a mortgage may be registered against a vessel that is still under construction, contrary to what one may initially expect mortgage taken against a vessel more nonetheless remain on its work.
date of the contract, the amount of the debt stayed in the contract, conditions for settlement, name and descriptions of the mortgage vessel, and the date and the date and number of the registration certificate or vessel constructions declarations, and the elected domicile of the mortgage creditor in the registrations office wherein the registrations has been made. Faisal Zazer, Article 57 of the Maritime Law, permits the impositions of precautionary seizure of any vessel only in connections with the maritime debt. A maritime debt may arise from any of the following. 1. Port and waterways fees. 2. Expenses relating to wreck, removal, and ship and cargo salvage. Damage caused by the vessel due to collisions, pollutions, or the similar maritime accident. Um, for losses in human lives or physical injuries caused by the ship or arising from its use. Contract for the use or, or shelter of a vessel. 6. Vessel insurance. 7. Transport of goods. 8. Loss of damage to the goods and package transported by the vessel. 9. Selfish contrast. 10. Supply the materials or tool necessary for the exploitation or maintenance of the vessel. 11. The building repair or equipping of the vessel and dock expenses. A new provisions introduced by the maritime law for the possibility of the precautionary seizure of other vessel owned by the debtor. This is permissible even if the maritime debt does not relate to the same vessel as the seizure might be requested if the vessel was owned by the debtor at the time the maritime debt arises. So this is with the exceptions of maritime debt arising from disputes on the ownerships of the vessel, jointly owned vessels, and the provisions thereof of mortgage vessels. An application for the precautionary seizure of a vessel may, may be under Article 59 of the, of the law. The applicant must include detail of the vessel in full the amount of the maritime debt along with supporting documentations. Said applications must be filed before the competent court. And when the court imposes the precautionary seizure, the order must be presented to the master of the vessel or his representative. So that's all the article. Bye bye and see you on my next video. Bye.